Hello guys, so today I will be going over tuples, which are a form of list that isn't mutable, it's an unchangeable forming of form of a list, as well as arrays, which in Python are part of the list class. Anyways, to create a tuple, we can do it with rounded brackets. Just like this. I created a variable this tuple, added apple banana cherry. Um And then just go with this tuple. All right, so it prints it out. Now let's check the type. And it's a tuple. Now, <coughs> everything I went over with lists, well, not everything, most things will apply to tuples, but because tuples are not changeable, there's some things that won't. Now, being unchangeable means that once it is created, they cannot be modified. So, if I say this tuple dot pop and then run it, or actually it just gives me the error. A tuple has no pop member because you cannot remove any item from a tuple because it's unmutable, it's unchangeable. Yeah, you cannot remove any items or add any new items to it. This is good if you want to create a list that has data in your, in whatever project you're doing. If you want to create a list, if you want to create a set of data that will not be changed throughout the entire project, no matter what the user puts into it, then tuples are great for that. You cannot clear a tuple, so this tuple.clear should give us an error. It does, but you can delete it. So if I use the delete function and then this tuple, this does not give us an error. And if I run it, I just copy this again just so we know that just so we can verify whether it exists or not after the delete function is called it gives us an error so it prints out line 2 saying it's a tuple but then we get an error after the fact because tuple is gone or we just remove the type function no it's still there it, anyway yeah you can delete a tuple the only methods you can use are the count method and the index method so, oh, as well as the length method, the length method. Uh, let me just show you that. X equals this tuple of oh, length, the length, and then this tuple. Oh, come on, don't do that. And then just print X. And yeah, it gives us three. So we can't figure out <coughs> we can't figure out the length of the tuple, but again, we can't change it. Um, let me go over the count and index functions really quickly. Sorry, just having some tea there. This tuple dot count apple. It will count the number of times apple called so let me just uh, copy that really quickly and let's set this to X clear this and yeah counts Apple twice let's check this for cherry one because it only appears once and let's go with the index method real quickly Index returns the first index of value. Yeah. So cherry appears at index two. Whereas if I do apple, it should return zero. Just like I went over in the list video. And banana should be one. And you can use the range function. Um, I'm not sure I went over the range function in the list video, but let's see. Uses a sequence of integers. X 
x equals this tuple dot I'm probably, yeah, I didn't really research the range function before making this video, so, before recording this video, so I'm probably gonna, I'm probably not going about it the right way. Let's just see what this does. It's tuple dot count. Take exactly one. Oh, yeah. Um, all right, it only gives us a range from zero to two. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna come back with the I'm gonna make another video about the range function after I'm done with the data collection methodology. The last thing I want to go over with tuples is that you can change an item in a tuple if you convert it into a list and then back into a tuple again. So here we have the tuple, our initial tuple, and then I can change it into the list using the list constructor. So I've created a new variable y that converts a list from x, and x was the variable that our tuple was assigned to. Now I want to change the second value in y into kiwi, from banana to kiwi. And then I use the tuple constructor, because like lists, tuple have their own constructor, which is the tuple keyword. So x is now being turned into a tuple of y. Then we can print x, and we get apple, kiwi, cherry instead of apple, banana, cherry. So there is a way to change a tuple, but that's only through conversion. Now that I'm done with tuples, I'm going to move on to arrays. Alright guys, now to move on to arrays. Now arrays are a bit tricky in Python. Um, if I'm doing this in C or C Sharp, I will make a video on arrays in a different language such as Java, C Sharp, or C++, but in Python, let's just go over this quickly. Arrays are used to store multiple values in a single variable, so kind of like lists. Python does not have a built-in support for arrays, but Python lists can be used instead. For most things you wouldn't use an array for, in Python you can just use it with a list. But there are a few exceptions, I'll go that in a bit. An array is a special variable which can hold more than one type of one value at a time. The main difference between these two data types is that the operations that you can perform on, perform on them. So not every function that can be used in a list can be used on an array, and vice versa. A quick example is that you can divide an array by 3, and it will divide each element in that array by 3. The same cannot be done with lists. At the end of this video, I will go over a quick example from that that I'll find online. I tried doing this a little bit with my own experimentation, and I kept getting some uh, weird results. I may or may not go over that if I remember what they were. The list is part of the Python syntax, so it does not need to be declared, whereas you have to declare an array before using it. I will go over this. You can store values of different data types in lists, heterogeneous, whereas in arrays, you can only store values of the same data type. I went over this a little bit in lists. When I added two lists together, one of them was an integer and the other was a list of strings. The added list had both integers and strings. Arrays will not be able to do that, so that's something exclusive to the list class. Arrays being rich in functionality and fast are used for arith arithmetic operations. They're useful for storing large amounts of data compared to lists. Basically what it means is that arrays are more closer to the metal. Arrays in Python use the C library for arrays, so Python arrays are a lot more efficient than Python lists. So they take less memory compared to lists, and they're more efficient for large mathematical operations. You will use arrays like if you're doing heavy compute, or if you're using a server and using it with AI to record a large amount of data and you have to go through a lot of numbers, but for the most part it shouldn't be that much needed. So to create an array, it's actually actually very similar to how you create a list, at least for the functional use of it. I'm going to create an array without declaring it first, which Python will recognize as a list. But the operations we can perform on this list will be array specific, so in terms of what we're using it for, it will still be an array. So here I've created my symbols, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. When I print the type of this symbol, it'll be a list. It recognizes, that a, uh, it recognizes this as a list, but because we're using uh, square brackets, we can use array-specific operations on this list. But let me go over a declared array really quickly. I 
have it safe somewhere. All right. Here is a declared array. I'm using from array import array from Python arrays library. Symbols equals array, so I have to declare that this list has an array. It's a type of a float. I do have, yeah. The type codes you can use before the comma here are over here. So if you use B, capital B, H, capital H, I, capital I, lowercase L, capital L, lowercase Q, and large Q, it expects there to be an integer for the list. If you're using D, then it's a real number, F for floats, and then U for Unicode. I have not found a way to use this with strings, though I'm sure there is one online where you can look it up, but for this I'll only be using integers, that'll be converted as floats. And then you have your array in the second listing onto to the right of the comma. When I print this, it's an array dot array type. And say I want to print a value from the array. And we get our second value, six. Now, say I want to get the type of that. Type, I think this may give us an error because rather than getting, actually I don't think it should. I think it'll be fine. It'll probably just give us a float value though rather than what I'm expecting. Yeah, it's a float value. So I guess that was pointless. I guess you can't really identify an array item versus a list item because it'll just be a float. But anyways, I tried testing the method where you can divide by three using this. Um, it gave me an error. So let me show you. Now let me just get rid of this type. X equals symbols divide by three then print x. Actually, I think I'm, I just realized why it gave me an error. Because when I was printing the array, let me just print it again. Symbols. Oh yeah, it gives me an error. So let me just comment this out. Let me just print symbols. Yeah, it's not printing the array, it's printing the whole thing. Array f comma. So yeah, we can't really perform an operation on that. Um, I wonder. Symbols dot. Is there a way to get the items? And honestly, I think this is like one of my worst videos because I really did not research this fully before making this. Let me just go over what I made over here. I can use a for loop to divide each item in this array by three. So I created a function for this, divide array, and it takes an input b. I create a value w that will equal to our array f. It's an empty array. This value w has no array. It's just an empty array that's expecting a float. So for s and b, which I will be putting symbols for the b, divide c, c, a random value c that I've created is equal to s divided by 3. So for every item in this array, I'll divide by 3 and I'll assign it to a variable c. And then w, our newly created array, will append c. So the C in, in the first run, for example, will take 3, divide by 3, it'll be 1, and then it'll add that to the W. And then it'll move on to 6, divide by 3, create 2, add to W, and so on and so forth. Then this returns W. This may seem a little confusing, because I'm not sure if I've released the function, the functions video yet, but by the time I've released this video, but yeah, I'll go over how to make functions and what the return keyword means in the functions video. Anyway, in the end, it will print the function with my array symbols inside it. And doing so, I am able to divide by 3. Sadly, this exact same method works for normal lists as well, so... Here is a normal list. And here it divides it. Using the same for loop. 
and it works for a normal list as well. So I wasn't able to successfully demonstrate the difference. This di difference that's listed here where you can divide one but not the other. It's mostly because the arrays, the arrays from arrays import that I made, it uses the NP module. Or rather it's better used with the NP module. I'll go over that later, maybe. Yeah, this video is a little hard. I think I'll make a different videos on lists and arrays, but in a different language. I think that'll explain this much better. But Python, just know that unless you're doing heavy amounts of mathematical computations, lists should be more than enough for most of your needs. Um, and then we do have the functions that can be used with the arrays. They're the exact same functions that can be used with lists. So if you've seen my lists video, just do the same things for arrays and it should be fine. And yeah, I guess that's it. That is all I want to go over with the rays.